tension means the attachment of the lower jaw with the upper jaw or skull for efficient biting and chewing. And there are different ways in which this attachment are attained depending upon the modification in the visceral arches. Or you can also define jaw suspension as a method by which upper and lower jaws are suspended or attached from the condocranium. Now let us briefly describe about different types of jaw suspension in vertebrates. So generally there are five types of jaw suspension in vertebrates. The first type of jaw suspension we'll be talking about is autodiastylic. In this type of jaw suspension, the jaws are attached to the cranium by anterior and posterior ligaments. Hyoid arc remains completely free or independent and does not support the jaw. Autodiastylic jaw suspension are found in canathostomes and acanthodians. The second type of jaw suspension is amphistylic. The quadrate or the basal and otic process of upper jaw are attached by the ligaments to condocranium. Similarly, the upper end of hyomandibula is also attached to the condocranium while the two jaws are suspended from its other ends. This arrangement makes double suspension and it is because the first and second arches participate in binding the jaws against the condocranium and the amphistylic jaw suspension is found in primitive sarc and the other type of jaw suspension is hyostylic in this type of jaw suspension the upper jaw is loosely attached by anterior ethmopalatine ligament and posterior spiricular ligament to cranium. Both the jaws are suspended from the hyomandibular and the upper end of which fits into auditory region of the skull. Since only hyoid arc binds the two jaws against cranium, this jaw suspension is termed as hyostylic. This type of jaw suspension provides the jaws a wider movement and helps in solving larger preys. The hyostylic jaw suspension are mainly found in elasma branch and bony fishes. And the fourth one is autostylic jaw suspension. So this type of condition occurs when hyomandibular does not participate but becomes modified into columella or steps of middle ear for transmitting sound waves. In autostylic jaw suspension, the upper jaw is completely fused by its process to the bony skull and the lower jaw is suspended from the upper jaw. In this type of jaw suspension, the support from the hyomandibular is not needed, so it enters the middle ear as columella or steps. For example, bony fishes, tetrapods, etc. And you know, there are three different types of autostylic jaw suspension. And the types are holostylic, monomostylic and streptostylic. So, in holostylic jaw suspension, the upper jaw is firmly fused with the skull and the lower jaw is suspended from it. This type of jaw suspension, the hyoid arc is complete and independent and to be mentioned here, this type of jaw suspension is found in chimeras. Other type of autostylic jaw suspension is minimostylic. In many tetrapods, hyomandibular forms columella. And the third type of autostylic jaw suspension is streptostylic. Here, the quadrate is loosely attached and is movable to the both ends. This type of jaw suspension are usually found in reptiles and birds. And the fifth type of jaw suspension is craniostylic jaw suspension. This type of jaw suspension is a characteristic feature of mammals and also some consider it as modification of autostylic jaw suspension. And you know, in craniostylic jaw suspension, the upper jaw fuses throughout its length with cranium. The hyomandibular forms the ear ossicles, milius, and incus, which are consequently two dermal bones. Entry of the lower jaw and squamosal of skull provides the articulation between jaws. 